Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. And we have some more core booty. I actually got a batch of six PCs, but video would be far too long, so we'll split them up over a few videos here. This wasn't one of the six. This was actually one of the seven. So what actually happened is I didn't want this PC, but the other ones I did want, so I paid him for the six, and then he said, oh, take that one anyway, and he just gave it to me. So, well, it was free, and if it's free, then I have it. So what do we have for nothing? Well, let's have one. So you can see the top, it has like a LCD panel or something in there, yeah. I'll have to try this switch on and see what it does. Uh, Xerox EX700, okay. And it says XX here, something covered up. Just some USBs, no USB 3. Graphics built on. This looks like a scuzzy to me. It looks like a scuzzy card in there. And you can see this is rather, well, yeah. <laughs> like somebody's been at this with a crowbar or something. Okay, this is broken. Yeah, so let's see if we can figure out what's inside this. If I can figure out how to get into it. And then let's see what it does, I think. Well, that's what's in here. So, two and a half inch hard drive, 500 gig, nothing really that interesting. Looks like a LGA775 machine to me, Core 2 or something like that. Some funny slots in here. So, PCI, then PCI E, a small one. And then these two long white slots, which are kind of like some sort of extended PCI, I think it's like, it is called something like that. And then another PCIe, okay. Looks like some sort of server, I'm pretty sure this is some sort of server, this is this SCSI card. So I'm thinking this might be a, a Xeon machine, don't know. And then at the top, it says Fiery or Fiery, and then this bloody LCD panel. So, as I mentioned, I think I'll actually try and power this up. I'll just put the current limiting light bulb in series with it. And I actually have it set to limit this time because last time I did this previous video, I forgot to do that, but nothing bad happened. I was lucky. There is my light bulb over there, okay, so you can see it. What's it going to do? Let's have a look. Well, it didn't go bang. Yeah, it went bright and that went dim. That would stop it going bang anyway, so I'm going to power this up. Let's see what this does, if anything. And figure out what this thing is. Which well, starts. Oh, look at that, EFI. Yeah, theory. Yeah. Well, you can see it actually now. Starting up. It actually does look like that, like this funny coloration on it. Yeah. Let's a monitor to it. Yeah, it is booting up. Let me just see if I can move this so you can see. Yeah, there, look. So, XP, EFI, Theory, asking me to log in. I suspect it's got a password. I can just plug a mouse in, we can have a quick look. While it's just looking for the mouse, I've noticed there's uh, two one connectors. One says net and one says scan. Just out of interest, right there, okay. That gives us some clue as to what this thing is actually being used for. It might take a little while to find the mouse often does with these machines. No, it has found it, so yeah, and there's some sort of password on it. Uh, this looks like German to me. Detlef isn't here. <laughs> looks German to me, yeah. 
actually is a way to find that. If we put like this word in here, like can vote, can vote, which is like password and like Google Translate Translate, and that will tell us. No, it is German because uh, this herunter foreign thing, Detlef's already taught me this one, it means shut down in German. So it's a German language machine over in the Canary Islands. Here's the motherboard. It's a bit bigger than I'd expect for a ATX motherboard, but probably is ATX actually. Some kind of armored USB connectors on it here, yeah, SATA funny connector right here. I think this might have gone to that display panel thing. Although I've got a feeling that actually connected to one of the USBs. Uh, there you go, that's something a bit different. We have, hey, we have this, look at that. Look at that chip there. If it is a chip. Uh, that's a very strange looking thing, guys, what do you think? Uh, this part of the VRM. I don't see any inductors around it. So I don't think so. <laughs> that is a strange, strange thing. Go on guys, what is that? Yeah, what is that thing? I suppose I have to just look up the number and find out. We'll look at it in a minute. Yeah, what that is. Couple of strips of RAM. The only 512 meg. Probably nothing unusual. I was wondering if it was like ECC memory or something, but anyway. And let's see what process we have in this thing. Well, it does look like a 775. Oh, you. That's really a bit hardened, let's see. That we can probably read this now with a better look. Oh yeah, it's a core two duo, nothing special or interesting. I suppose it might have been a Xeon, but it ain't. And then this scuzzy card. PCBA plugin video. Greba, Greba. Two. Video grabber? Oh, it's just like, yeah. Some sort of capture card. I think that's what that's actually saying. Okay, so not a scuzzy card. EFI. Altera Cyclone. <laughs> Some sort of RAM, I would say. Okay. So a rather unusual video capture card. Hmm. You do wonder what this thing was used for. Is it worth anything? I doubt it. Let's have a look. We can look this one up. We can see, yeah, there's a part number on the motherboard. We can look that one up. And then let's see what this funny chip thing is here. Just interested. Well, it seems that there are some of these motherboards around and people are asking for stupid money for them in my opinion why i really don't know doesn't mean they're actually worth that we can just go to advanced and then see if anybody actually even bought one of these things and they haven't so ask what you like but nobody's bought one <laughs> I've no idea what's so special about this, or for that matter, why people think there is something special about this. Yeah, EX770 board. Okay. And then we have this video grabber thing. Yeah. 45080820. Yeah, that there are a few around again, and they all seem to think they're worth a lot of money, but this one thinks it's worth less. Okay. Uh, anybody bought one of those? Nope. Oh, and this funny chip I wanted to look just to see if we find a data sheet for that thing. Okay. 
Oh, and that's what that is. It's not a chip. They're inductors. Yeah, coupled inductors. Okay. Anybody who already knew that, well done. Yeah, look at there. Uh -huh. High current multiphase inductor. Ah, oh, so this is part of the VRM. Yeah, must have the MOSFETs under here. These are all your inductors. Five phases. These are your output capacitors. Well, I've never seen one of them before, you guys. Uh, never seen one of them. So it would seem then, for free, because I didn't actually pay for this one, I've got some worthless, valuable stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Worthless, valuable stuff. But it was fun looking at it, yeah. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, something a bit different on this one. This is a bit more normal, shall we say, than that last machine. So, oh, I remember these are like a, a golf ball on off switch, yeah. Obviously, as the seven segment LED, two digits, I would imagine, you know, sleep turbo reset. So we know from that, this is an AT machine, not ATX. Seen sewer. Oh, oh, CN. So, yeah, this is like a hundred south in uh, Spanish or something like that, yeah. Hundred south, okay. So. Obviously, who was building these things back in the day? I'm not sure about hundred. I think it's spelt wrong. Okay, graphics card, yeah, ports and a gap. Okay, a gap. So no USB add-on thing or anything like that in there. AT could be. Well, we know this could be a. 486, we know it could be an early Pentium, Pentium 1, although I have found one much later that it was 80, yeah, that was really unusual. So, yeah, get your guesses in why undo these screws. Seems from comments on the previous video, where I had a machine with a, well, that 286 actually with a five and a quarter inch and three and a half inch drive. You guys saying how difficult it is to find this stuff on car boot sales or flea markets where you live. I can't give any reason, but I have no problem finding this stuff. Okay. I even have one trader there now who looks out for it. I get most from him. I mean, I do find stuff from other people as well. Okay, so there we go. Right. So it is in fact a socket seven, so another early Pentium machine. Quite an early one, no AGP on these. PCI plus ISA, full PCI three ISA. Has a floppy drive, but no hard drive. Okay. So I think this is a sort of machine I'll probably just get it apart, get the stuff onto the desk and let's have a look to see what we've got here. So, Intel chipset. No particular brand on this one again. Okay. Not sure that's a date code, doesn't make any particular sense to me anyway. If it is, okay. Four PCI, three I, so yeah, fairly standard Pentium one ish <laughs> board, yeah, because there was another Pentium before that, and I still don't know what they're called. But obviously, it comes before Pentium one. Uh, Trident. TGU9440, that chip, okay. TVGA94 PCI, Trident graphics card. Again, with two RAM on board and you can plug two more in. I wonder if you can still get these RAM chips. You know, I've owned for years, yeah. We used to buy them and sell them in the computer shop so people could upgrade. Tried at 94, that maybe gives us an idea of the age of this machine. So this is 
30 years old. <laughs> 30 years old. Let's see if this one works in its old age. Well, we're basically ready to go. Let's see what it does. It's booting. It's surprising how many of these old machines actually work. I mean, the blue lights on the monitor. It's an i430VX. There's a number at the bottom here. That would actually give you the model of the motherboard, I think. Yeah, that number down there. So we can look that up in a minute, see if that tells us anything. Okay, a bit bigger. There you go. So yeah, let's look that up and then maybe see if that tells us what this motherboard is. 1996, an actual factor, a little bit newer than the graphics card. Okay, so it works, we can say. Pentium 133. There's also another number here, P5i430VX-250 Explorer. But then that says BIOS, maybe that's referring to the BIOS rather than the motherboard. Okay, let's have a look to see if we have any money in this one compared to that last machine, which had like kind of like imaginary monies, I think. Well, that did help. So from the number at the bottom of the screen, or at least the first part of it, it is in fact a QDI. This one, it's what it said on the screen by the BIOS. It's an Explorer 2. Okay, or an Explorer. So that is the motherboard. Let's see if it's have any value. QDI sometimes holds some value, to be honest. Yeah, and here we are directly in the sold listing. So two sold, one 15th of April, the one back in February. This one fetched £78. This one fetched 130 Okay, so definitely these will sell. We can see what they sold for. We can see the price as well, somewhere between those, yeah. This one came from the USA, this one came from Australia. So that's how much these are worth. Definitely a good purchase, this one for 20 euros. Let's look at the graphics card. Okay, so the graphics card, well that's actually the VL, that's a Visa Local Buzz version. Went for 17.65. That is the PCI. That's the same as mine. Sold for 44 back in January. That is an ISA card. Something different. And that is an ISA card. So one sold from the USA for 44 pounds back in January. Okay. So we have to say it's worth that. I mean, somebody paid that for it. Yeah. So all in all, between the motherboard and graphics card it must have like 120 or something like that yeah and he's got a bit of ram in the processor as well okay so i think that was not a bad little deal maybe not quite as interesting as the other one but certainly more saleable than the other one hope you enjoyed that and i look forward to seeing you all very soon with some more car booty on learning electronics repair ciao for now guys